Alrighty guys, how's it going? So here in front of us today, we have uh, some items that uh, I carry as part of my EDC or my everyday carry. Um, and this is not just in a outdoor or wilderness context, but you know, if I'm going out and about, uh, going to town, going to the city, uh, traveling, these are the types of items that uh, I like to have with me and just some of the items that I wear on my person. Now to start off, uh, we'll start with the thing that holds my pants up and uh, allows me to carry uh, this many items uh, in my pants comfortably. Uh, this right here is a Blue Alpha Hybrid Belt. Um, this thing right here is super comfortable to wear. You don't even notice you have it on. And whenever you carry a sidearm, whether it be um, outside the waistband or inside the waistband, where this has just a little bit of rigidity to it, um, that makes carrying a holster a lot more comfortable and allows you quicker, safer, more secure draws whenever you are uh, drawing uh, your firearm, whether you're practicing or you're needing to use it in a uh, real world scenario. Uh, and this thing is extremely adjustable. You order these to your size. Um, the sizes are pretty specific um, for specific reasons. Um, and they have this Velcro right here. So you undo this, you take the belt loop off, put it on, close the Velcro, and then you can adjust the exact tension that you need for how you want to wear your belt with the gear that is gonna be on it and the type of pants you're wearing. Uh, but that's pretty straightforward. A belt is a belt, uh, but this is just uh, a belt taken to the next level. So there is that. I'm going with sidearm, still carrying my trusty Glock 17 Gen 4. Uh, it's what I've been carrying uh, ever since I turned 21. It's what I have got thousands upon thousands of rounds of practice with over the years, and I'm very proficient with, so that's why I like to carry it. Uh, this is an outside the waistband holster that you're looking at right now. Uh, as far as the brand that I have been using the most and that I've found to be the most comfortable to carry over very long periods of time is a ceiling. One of these has yeah, the stamp on it. These are custom Falco holsters, and this is their hybrid versions. Hybrid meaning that the, uh, the front sides here are Kydex and the back sides are premium leather. Um, and that is really nice because these leather ends is what is ultimately pressed up against your body. And then these additional uh, swoops here you see at the top. These are the sweat guards um, and that just helps whenever your firearm is seated into the holster if that is up against your skin. Uh, it keeps your firearm from rubbing against you. It protects it, protects you and I found that it can be a point of placement to help draw the weapon quicker. I highly recommend uh, Falco holsters. Um, I've got a bunch of these in uh, different configurations, drop leg holsters, uh, and then some for some different pistols. I've yet to really have any issue aside from uh, one that just had a slight measurement that was off and I hit them up in an email within 24 hours, had a brand new holster with the issue fixed on the way. So um, great customer service, great people, and that is the holsters that I am currently using every single day. And now since we are carrying a gun and we are carrying a bunch of sharp pointy objects that can cut us, you should always have some type of uh, medical bleeding control on you. Um, I will have an additional med kit and normally if uh, I'm outdoors or just going about kind of daily business and don't have to wear very casual dress. I will have a six inches really banded, some type of tourniquet and things like that on my person and cargo pockets. But if I have to wear some type of jeans or something where my pocket storage space is limited, uh, I will still always make room for one of these. Uh, this is a Rhino Rescue uh, hemostatic gauze with uh, the ch Chetizen, I believe is how you pronounce that. Uh, but this is a combat level gauze, so this can control major, major bleeding. Uh, you can stop gunshot wound bleeding with this by packing uh, and then wrapping so uh, with this any, anything any type of damage you could do to yourself uh, with anything laid out on the table here um, you could pretty much count on uh, being able to take care of it aside from just extremely bad arterial bleeding uh, but you have a much better chance of uh, making it with this than if you didn't have it and then also too if you're in a car wreck uh, you're out biking something like that and it weighs nothing the package it makes it look bulky but that right there is your overall form factor 
no reason not to carry it now something that hangs on the outside normally left of my pants i like to have a pair of gloves with me now whenever i'm outdoors uh, a nice robust pair of leather gloves is key for working in and around the fire handling hot items sharp items uh, just taking rocks out of the ground moving wood um, and these are what I like to go with. I normally take and attach these to my carabiner on my belt loop with one of these modal straps, M-O-D-L. Uh, these are those, you know, universal multi-use stretchy rubberized locking straps. You got like this metal nipple here. You just wrap it around. You can add a bunch of these linked together. Um, and just a great way to attach gear to uh, different items to secure things. Uh, so that's a multi-use item, but then if I'm out and once again wearing blue jeans or something like that, a more low-profile pair of thinner gloves um, is still nice to have with you. Uh, this is a pair of Pentagon gloves. Pentagon makes really uh, high-quality stuff. Um, I've used these for some pretty heavy work, and they don't really show it uh, because there's no way for you to reach through the screen and get a feel of these but they feel super thin so when you have them on you have a ton of dexterity it's almost like you're not really wearing a glove at all but these still offer a, a lot of uh, protection and if you just get caught out uh, you need to pick something up that might not be sanitary uh, you have this on you okay now down here this is an EDC tray that I got for my nightstand because my nightstand looks like the Tasmanian devil ripped through it um, and this helps keep everything together um, it's an anodized aluminum tray from Dango uh, and a couple of these other items on here is Dango stuff as well because they make phenomenal high-end EDC gear that like once you once you have it it will pretty much last you a lifetime so we'll set this back down there so if there's any real takeaway from any of these items, um, I would say it would have to be with the multi-tool. Um, I think you should always have one of these on you. Um, got a ton of these from different brands. This is one I've been carrying for about seven months now, just kind of out of curiosity. Uh, when I was going through Rhino Rescue's medical gear, I seen they had this multi-tool for a reasonable price. I think 40 some 50 some dollars. I'll have all this stuff linked down below. And when I got it, I did not expect the quality to be uh, at this level. Um, and I've done a ton with this, uh, with the pliers, the blade, um, the saw teeth, you know, mainly in the woods for, uh, for woodworking type task uh, and gear maintenance. And with the items that are included on this particular multi-tool, it does everything um, that I would need it to do for all the stuff, uh, for all the tasks that I tend to uh, tackle on a day-to-day -day basis. But depending on what you do for work, uh, for hobbies, that will depend on uh, what particular brand, what particular type I needed to clean the blade of this thing. Because um, I did, I do make sure I keep these things sharp, but depending on the steel type, uh, you might need to oil them. You might need to uh, like keep them coated. We got that. I've come to really enjoy wearing a watch uh, right now. I'm wearing my Vair uh, C5 Tactical, I believe is the model name. Really, really nice, low-profile watch. Been beating it around in the woods, but, you know, it looks very professional. So you can wear it in a formal setting. But then here, this is a Dango Spec Ops watch. Uh, and it's a very, very robust watch. You know, a slightly thicker uh, profile, but this is one that you could take, pick up, sling in a brick wall, pick it up, and uh, put it back on your wrist, and nobody's ever going to know. Um, I probably will be changing the strap on it. The strap's comfortable, um, but just over time, I have had these nylon-type straps, you know, kind of wear through uh, from abrasion, uh, and I'm more of a fan of these silicone-style or rubberized straps. Um, Plus, you know, they don't ever take on water or anything of that nature. And both of these have the, um, the coating on the numbers to where they absorb light. And then they'll, they'll glow in the dark for, you know, a couple hours, depending on how much UV uh, direct sunlight they get throughout the day. Um, so that if you go from a light conditions to just immediately no lights, uh, even indoor light will charge up the, uh, the luminescent qualities of these. And that could be useful uh, if you're in a building and the power goes out and uh, you need to know what time it is.
Then you always need to have a way to make fire. Um, not too long, well, about probably two months ago, uh, got this Zippo lighter. I uh, just thought it looked really, really nifty and sleek. And I seen you could get different inserts for the inside. And I just kept the standard type of insert. Uh, you know, you fill it up with uh, the fuel, you have the wick, you have uh, your flint wheel in there, you strike it up, and boom, there you go. That's your, that's your old-fashioned uh, windproof lighter, as they would call it. But this right here is a dual flame butane insert for the Zippo. And so you get a really nice, uh, strong flame that is 100% windproof um, and uh, will get pretty much any tender source going, whether you're in the woods or you're just trying to light up a bunch of birthday candles really quick. So, Plus, it's just a fun little fidget toy um, to, uh, to play around with in your pocket. If you're bored, waiting in line somewhere, uh, and it's got a bit of class to it. Now, I always have a flashlight on me nowadays. I've got a ton of different EDC style uh, flashlights of, you know, this size, uh, this quality uh, that I kind of cycle between. Uh, the one that I've been carrying the most here lately is this Olight Warrior Mini 3. Uh, this, is one, uh, this is one that I got off uh, Better Bushcraft. Dot com because I think it's one of the only places you can really pick up lights in the U.S. right now. Uh, but yeah, it's just got a great way to uh, cycle through the brightnesses uh, if you want to. If you want to pick it up and pull it out and just hit this rear <coughs> rear button, uh, it throws it on uh, turbo or the one right below turbo. Uh, you hit this three times and you got your strobe light. I always want to have a strobe light on my EDC flashlight. And then you can go down to a moonlight mode, which is really the one that I use the most because I normally need a light like this just if I'm searching around for something in the vehicle, uh, if I just have dropped something outside, uh, or if I'm just doing something light uh, in my hands or working with small tools. In the body of this thing, I mean, this is another one of those things that can really take a beating, uh, waterproof. Uh, the tips of this right here would be really good if you needed to use it to uh, to break glass, break a window, break a windshield. So, nice to uh, have on it. Oh, but then the thing that really sets this one apart, because the one that I had been carrying uh, the most was this Cyan Sky P20R. And it is a phenomenal light as well. However, the clip that's on this thing doesn't have the additional function that this one does to where you can take and flip it around and put it on the bill of your hat and now you also have yourself a nice headlamp so you know if you needed to do something hands-free which normally uh, if you need to use your EDC light unplanned outside you're going to need both your hands for whatever you're uh, working on um, so being able to turn that into a headlamp is is really nice onto our pocket knife there's 10 million plus different options for a pocket knife, but uh, especially if I want something that I consider to be a nice, uh, classy, formal looking knife that can also hold up uh, to uh, some heavy outdoor use. This is, we'll get up there, this is a Fantizo knife. Uh, it's made out of one, yeah, like 14C to uh, 28 in steel. Very good, high quality steel. Uh, it's got aluminum scales on it, uh, solid clip, great retention, really smooth to open and close, flipper on the back, so one hand open and closing, no problem. Got a place for a lanyard if you wanted to put that in there uh, and dummy cord it uh, to a belt loop or something, so if you was using it and you dropped it, didn't have to worry about losing it on the ground. Okay, now on my side, this is the, the carabiner set uh, that I will use to take and clip uh, my gloves uh, to my hip. But if I don't, uh, if I'm in a situation where I can't really or it doesn't make sense to have my gloves uh, on my side, it just look goofy. I'm still going to have this on there. Uh, this is a Ravivon Titanium uh, multi-tool carabiner. Right here on one side, we have... A locking razor blade good for opening packages good just as an emergency last ditch uh, blade that you could use for a lot of different things um, right here you have a tiny little ruler that's not really that useful more of a gimmick but I'm sure in some situations that might 
could come into play. But more importantly, you have this tiny bit set. So you have a tiny Phillips head screwdriver that you can then take out, flip around, and have a tiny flathead screwdriver. Uh, great for electronics, um, so very handy to have around Christmas time when you're trying to take batteries in and out of toys if they're not rechargeable. And then dangling from it, uh, this is a Ravi Vine glow in the dark uh, little lanyard. Um, it's just, it looks nice, uh, and it's one of those things that it will charge up throughout the day in sun and just light in general. It probably won't show it very well uh, on video right now. But that's something you can always take off and hang on anything that you uh, want to come back to or you don't want to lose uh, once the uh, daylight hours start to uh, dwindle down. And then right here, this is a Dango uh, capsule. This is one of their mini capsules. It's anodized aluminum with a seal, so it's waterproof down to 1,000 feet. Um, and in that, I just like to keep some uh, different types of medication that I might want to have access to at any given point in time. Depending on what state you're in and what the medication is, um, you can and can't carry that. So, I mean, that's something um, you just have to check on for yourself. My state, this particular medication, it's not a problem, uh, you know, most of the time they wouldn't say nothing to you anyways, as long as you're not causing any problems. And then I guess the final item that we got here is our wallet, because, I mean, if you're going out, uh, you're probably going to need to make sure you have your ID with you, uh, some way to pay for stuff, and everything else is just a bonus. So this right here is the M1 Maverick Spec Ops Special Edition Burnt Bronze Wallet, uh, and this is made by Dango. Uh, it is just one of the best. I've probably went through 10 different types of these slim profile wallets because this is a style of wallet that I'd prefer over a traditional bifold wallet. I mean, I, I sat on one of those for a long time uh, throughout school, and it just, it's not good for your spine, and I don't have a butt as it is, so it's like sitting on, you know, an encyclopedia. But with this, we have the metal body, uh, then you have this really heavy-duty uh, ranger-style band that goes around it. Um, here on the back side, you can set this up in so many different ways. This wallet is just a vast multi-tool in and of itself. Uh, right here on the back side, just for the quickest and easiest access, I have a debit card and I have my ID. I'm not going to show that information, obviously. Uh, you could fit probably one more card in there without it becoming too tight, but with that, you can just easily pop those out with your thumb, grab them, go about it and be good to go. Uh, one cool thing about this wallet, though, is when we get back to this uh, piece of metal here is where it's coated. When you store your cards, if you decide to store your cards behind it, uh, it will block chip readers. So this that would in turn, uh, you know, protect your debit cards, uh, your credit cards from anybody that wants to walk by and try to uh, steal your uh, banking information. Uh, now, what I like to do is I like to take any cash that I'm going to be carrying with me. I think it's a good idea to always carry around enough cash to where you could reasonably uh, purchase anything that you would need and or get back home or to wherever your home base is at the moment uh, if all the services required to do so didn't or wasn't accepting a card. Normally, 100 200 bucks that will fit the bill. Um, but with that, you can easily just pull that out and you know have your cash um carrying it in the way i have it in there it's not the easiest and quickest to put back so it wouldn't be something i would do at the counter i would you know i could pull it out pay stick this in my pocket then when i get back to the car just stick it down in there without having to just wad it up and, and cram it down in that band uh, but yeah then here we can just take and pull out all our cards i have one two three we got four cards in there, and it was extremely loose. Uh, concealed carry, uh, another debit card, um, a gym card, and my insurance card. So that is what is there. And now this metal plate right here, this is what is your uh, chip read blocker. So you can pull that out and slide your cards in behind like that and still easily uh, get to them just by you know, thumbing them out the same way we did on this back side. But for me, I just like having them 
down in the front there. But the other important thing that that metal divider does, regardless of if your cards are on this side or the other, is it allows you to pull your multi-tool that is housed within your wallet out. And this is what makes this uh, the, the Spec Ops Edition. So this right here is a, a stainless steel, a coated stainless steel, multi-tool with a couple different features on it so right here you see this v-cut with those teeth and then these two holes that right there is two separate types of rope tensioners uh, it's kind of hard to explain um, how those are used if you don't have any experience in certain types of knots and how to loop uh, ropes through and around but that's also kind of the reason why some of these additional holes are there uh, you can look up diagrams but it came in handy if you're needing to tie something down uh, quickly and have a way to uh, loosen it and these holes are the perfect size for things like paracord uh, and then these teeth right here allow you to use cordage uh, that is down to an even smaller diameter uh, right here, this oval light cutout, that is for an oxygen, um, like an oxygen wrench. Then right there, that is a quarter inch uh, hex wrench, which is a very common size. Uh, right here on the left, this is your blade. It's not razor sharp, but you can cut with that. Um, I was able to take and easily cut through cardboard with it. Um, and then here on the front side, you have a, like a, a scraper, a chip. Um, this tool is not sold this way, but obviously you could hold it in this fashion. Use this as a self-defense tool. Uh, if you needed to cut rope or something with it, you have a really nice serrated blade right here. And the thing to remember is the like the sides of this, where this is housed in, uh, is all metal. So that's why you can have these sharp uh, tools, these sharp corners um, on the outside and be able to, to not have to worry about it damaging anything like on your pants, like your pocket, or uh, any of the cards that you're carrying. Uh, over here, you have another, like a bit of a wedged edge. It's not as sharp as this other edge, but you have a nail puller. Uh, you can use this front bit as a uh, pry bar. And then right here, this is a seat belt cutter or a cordage cutter, uh, just another blade option. And because of the way you can hold this, you can really get some good leverage. So if he's in a vehicle accident or something and you didn't have a pocket knife, you just wanted to carry a wallet uh, like this with you, um, then you can pull this out and easily use this as a rescue tool. And then uh, finally, and uh, almost most importantly, you have a bottle opener right here at the tail end. It's a really nice high quality bottle opener, easy to uh, quickly pull out of your wallet uh, in the event that uh, you're really thirsty and you need to open up a, a nice cold beverage. So yeah, there you have it guys. That is uh, everything that is in uh, my typical everyday carry. I get tons of questions about that. Um, for especially whenever I'm not out in the woods, um, regardless of where I'm where I'm at, where I'm going, this is the this is the stuff that I have on me, and will always uh, never leave the house without having that that tray right there. Just as a good way to organize it, keeps you from uh, knocking the smaller components off of your nightstand. And uh, yeah, really curious to see what you guys think about it. I look forward to seeing uh, what you guys carry as part of your EDC down in the comments section. So make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you have not already. Share the channel and the videos with your friends, family, anybody enjoys uh, good old outdoor activities and gear. Um, and you know, stuff like this is going to be thrown in along with um, a lot of the outdoor stuff. So look forward to seeing uh, what y'all say in the comments. And until the next one. Adios.